Hi, this is Shannon Steimel, and uh, welcome to PD Bytes Presents St. Louis School Library in Review. I am your host today, along with my special co hosts for these sessions. So I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Victoria Jones. I'm coordinator of district libraries for the school district of Clayton and the librarian at Wydown Middle School. And I'm Alicia Landers. I'm the director of curriculum technology for the Melville School District. Thank you, ladies, for being here with me today. Thanks for having us. So this uh, second session today is called 1920, the year of being told yes. Um, with our guest, Kelly W. I will let her introduce herself, but I will say that um, the reason why we've invited her here today is because she was the Midwest Education Technology Conference Librarian of the Year this year. So congratulations, yeah. Kelly. Woohoo. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. This is wonderful. And um, I'm Kelly Worthmuller. I'm the librarian at Brittany Woods Middle School and the lead librarian for the District of University City. Great. So, Kelly, I was hoping that maybe you could start off um, before you start your slides presentation with just sharing a little bit about the work that you've done um, around education technology in your building. I know that um, when you were nominated, you were particularly recognized for your work with your tech committee and also for uh, bringing your school into the Future Ready initiative. Of course. So we, um, this last year I started a tech committee um, because we haven't had one in a couple years and we are one-to-one -one, and as going one-to-one -one, it's all kinds of crazy and all kinds of messes and it's wonderful except there's no policies in place and nobody knows the communication was not wonderful. So that was the big things that we were tackling by getting a group of teachers together so that way it wasn't just my voice, it was many voices at the table um, and that way we got a little bit more accomplished. And then we started trying to um, just teach student, I'm sorry, teach teachers more about technology and cool things they can do in the classroom that they didn't know about and just more collaboration around that. We try and meet about once a month. Um, spring got really hard. Um, so we haven't met like we wanted to, but we're revamping it for next year and it'll be really exciting when it all rolls out again. Um, and then with Future Ready, with our district in general, um, we got a new curriculum and instruction superintendent three years ago, and he has been full on board with whatever we want. And we've just been um, rolling along, trying to, to move ahead. Um, we have, I'm starting a makerspace next year, which I've been very leery about that in the past, but it's finally time. And we have makerspaces in a couple of our class, a couple of our libraries. Um, we've just started fixing all the little things in our district that that just need to be fixed, that we don't necessarily have a good policy about access and a good policy about differentiate, no, um, diversity. I knew it was one of those D words. <laughs> um, and I like a good policy about privacy and uh, access and allowing the students to check out whatever they want and fines. And we're just having some of those really hard conversations for some of our librarians and just trying to get us all on the same page. Um, so that's just where we're kind of starting. Yeah, that's great, Kelly. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that you can share yours. Where'd that button go? I think if you hover around the bottom, you should find it. There we go. So that was me editing. So I didn't quite know what to expect, so I just kind of I've done a bunch of stuff, and that was me when I was uh, starting the school 17 years ago, and my assistant found that and now posted it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so young. No, I was like 23. <laughs> um, but the kids can't figure out if that was 20 years ago or two months ago. <laughs> That's so, right, because I think I, you look exactly the same. Aw, I knew I liked you. <laughs> so, and then my next slide just explains it all, but... You know, you can read through that. It's, it's all basically, I just find things to apply for and sometimes I get them. So mm -hmm. you never know if you are the only person who applies and you know, then you get the grant money. So you might as well apply. Mm -hmm. so, what are some of the grants that you've gotten that you've been most excited about? Um, so some of my grants um, I've gotten, we just got the sh show me, 
the state librarian one. That's how mm -hmm. I got my librarians to go to MUTC this year. Um, so that one was wonderful. Um, I got my, I got the Dollar General one a couple times. That's great. Um, we have a in-district one that I help everybody else write because now I'm on the board, so I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the library gets its stuff from, the, you know, like yeah. written and it has their names on it. It just shows up in the library. So it's great. Um, so those are the ones that I've written most recently. Um, we're, since I'm starting the Makerspace, I have a whole list of ones. Sorry, it's going to be people talking. Of course. Of course. Um, Should we wait for that or keep going? I think keep going. Keep talking. Yeah, keep going. All right. Yeah. So um, since I'm starting to do the Makerspace, I have a whole list of grants somewhere on my computer to start working on this summer. Um, especially the ITEF grant mm -hmm. and it's local, so and a bunch of others. So, well, cross my fingers. So Ke Kelly, I have successfully written an ITEF grant. Um, so Good. if you need any tips, you can talk to me. <laughs> oh, definitely. So all about using resources. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> so excellent. So um. And I was an ALA Emerging Leader, and that was really, that was a great, great experience. Um, I got to speak in Anaheim and Connecticut because of it. So I got to meet all kinds of wonderful people and network. So that was great. So, um, and I know you represented the state of Missouri very well, because I'm, I'm sure I met you in Connecticut. I didn't. And our districts touch each other, but we didn't know each other. We had to go to Connecticut. <laughs> learn about the great things that you're doing. Thank you. Um, so I've already talked about everything on that. So I threw that in just in case. Um, so about, about a month ago, I realized that I've been just being told yes to everything I ask for. And um, it's pretty yes. amazing and kind of scary. And I figured I should write down how I get things done because I didn't realize before that I actually have a plan, um, but I do. and like we have a brand new teacher here who he wanted to do something he's like well i need to go ask the principals i'm like you never start with the principals don't go ask them I'm like <laughs> i'm in the dark <laughs> so this i put it together that this is who i start with um i usually start with my students and then my new teachers um, and then I have one friend who, one teacher friend who just challenges me and pushes me and tells me when I'm wrong and tells me when I'm crazy and what I can handle and what I can't. And then I go and throw it onto my digital PLN and see what everybody else has done and find the resources. And I love my vendors because um, they have to, they have to pretend to like me at the very least. <laughs> and they have to try and help me. Um, but they've also seen everything and they've seen my district so they know what i what'll fly and what won't so i'm not sure enough people use their vendors like i use my vendors for all those types of things seeing what everybody oh so i clicked and it moved um so then i kind of reflect and come up with a plan and then i go to district or building admin or district admin um because they're much more likely to say yes if i have a plan even if it's like halfway formed, they're still gonna, right now they'll say yes to anything I ask for, so I just keep asking for things. <laughs> um, and um, as long as I truly believe it's good for students, it's really hard to tell a teacher no, as long as they're gonna do the work. So sometimes I just ask for forgiveness instead of permission. So some of the things that I've been told yes for for next year is with the makerspace, I've been told yes to a 3D uh, poster printer um, and I have a student doing, working on the CNC machine right now, trying to figure it out. He went and got, um, I had forgotten noise reduction headphones. So he went to the gate room, the gifted room and went and got some for me. So that was, he was much more on top of it than I was today. We got two, we have one 3d printer and then we have one on the way. Cause I'm like, I think we need another one. And he goes, okay, order one. Okay. Um, and then the v we're getting a VR class set because I asked my operations director when the administrators are getting new phones. So, and it was like that month. So I'm getting all of their old phones. 
and then making that into a class set VR set. So, nice. um, yeah. So we're writing new curriculum this summer. Our old curriculum is from 2003. So I've never used it. <laughs> so I'm like, we should, and the problem, I'm the only middle school. So whatever I do is fine, but we have four elementaries and they're not on the same page. So we need something to get everybody on the same page. So when they come to me, I can't tell what building they come, came from. Mm -hmm. um, I want more teacher PD and collaboration. We're starting a whole new schedule again. So changing schedules seems like a, every couple years. So we're trying to figure out how to um, add some of that, get to some of those collaboration meetings. Um, two things that I wanted to add for my school is I asked if I could have all of the students do book trailers, make it required to a year. So they're gonna do it in December and they're gonna be due December 1st and May 1st. And I have the ELA department on board with that and we're gonna roll it out all year. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then as I was thinking about my curriculum, I couldn't figure out how to get like the formative assessment and like how to ask those questions in a timely manner if I only see them, you know, sporadically. So I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna get the do nows once a week in both ELA and science, and they're gonna ask my questions. So I get the data from their do nows. Um, and one example might be something like, in science they're studying cells. So I give them an ebook and say, go to this ebook on this page and answer this question. So I can see if they got in, so that way I know they can get into Destiny, get into an ebook, and that way they can answer the question. So it was some practical use of those skills that I've been teaching that I'm not, that I haven't been able to see if they can really do it. Yeah, I think that's genius idea. Right. Um, getting involved with those do nows because it's quick for the teacher um, and provides you with some really meaningful data. Um, and I asked our um, innovations director, I'm like, okay, so how do I do this? How, do, like, how I, I can't handle being in every one of their Google classrooms mm -hmm. because then I will not be able to see my real Google classrooms. So he right. made me a separate account. So I will have a separate account with just the, like where I'm a co-teacher in everybody's Google classroom. So that way I can add them in that way. Um, and then I thought I was going to grade them all. I was being very ambitious. And the science department goes, no, we will grade them for you. I'm wow. like, perfect. Yeah. And I will, I'm going to make them, you know, fairly easy. I'm, I don't want, you know, I don't want to have to grade 600 paragraphs, you know, but, you know, at least so I can see, but also then so I can see like, do they know how to screenshot? You know, so it's some of those basic tech skills that they're not getting. Do you know how to, you know, so just it's, it'll be an easy way to get every data from every person in the building. Yeah. So, um, and then we're going to do makerspace after school twice a week. Um, I have a new young teacher who is super excited and gung ho. So I am, I'm like, Hey, you want to help me with that? Don't you? And he's like, yeah, I'm like, perfect. Um, and then he is also high, um, eighth grade social studies. So we've already started collaborating and figuring out what, they're gonna, what their projects are gonna be and how I can help. And then I just talked with the science department and did the same thing. So um, my brain is gonna explode and I have way too much on my plate right now and I need to learn how to say no. <laughs> so. so, and I've just talked way too fast. There was my head exploding. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So, um, I also, I'm working on delegating and I do have a bunch of strong student helpers. And um, the new teacher that I have been talking to a lot, he's like, you have such a wonderful staff. I'm like, I've never thought about it that I have a library staff and like I'm in charge, I've never used those words. So now I'm going to make it my staff and it's gonna, it's just another thing I'm adding, but it should take, it should help a whole lot if I can give each kid one position and you have this one thing to do. So I have not been very good at that in the past, so. When do the kids usually help you? Um, I have a couple students that I am one of their electives, just like one or two. Um, and they're usually a couple really high functioning students who are bored and just wanna help and it's more like an internship. Mm. And then I have like one or two students who it's, 
there that I'm their elective also, but it's more, um, baby, you're failing and you need to sit next to me and we need to check your grades every day and I have a relationship with you, but they also answer my phone and they check out any kid who comes in and they're, they're a library worker, they're just doing their work behind my desk. Um, and then one of my eighth graders, when he was in sixth grade said, well, we had a rack, a reader's advisory council in elementary school, we should start one here. So we did um, and it was, I, we didn't organize it very well. So they, um, they have a pass that basically says, as long as the teacher lets them out, they can come down whenever they want. So I have a couple students who are down with me uh, four hours a day. I'm like, don't you have work to do? Oh. Like, shouldn't you be learning <laughs> something? Yeah. So um, you say yes all the time as well. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Well, and if they're here, if they're down here, they're going to help me. So I'm not going to say no. I right. actually pulled and them. And I would say they probably are learning a lot while oh, they're with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And really practical things that obviously they feel very empowered and feel, you know, an integral part of your, of your library. And these are some students who don't always have the social skills. Mm -hmm. So I have a seventh grader that last year she wouldn't talk to anybody. So I make sure to send her out to go speak to people. Mm -hmm. And she yells at me and throw things at me. I, I throw a lot of things. So I throw things at them and <laughs> I, I can juggle. So I have juggling balls. So we throw the juggling balls back and forth. Um, hopefully not when a principal walks in. That's only happened twice. Mm -hmm. um, so, and their parents all know it. Their parents like, are like, you can throw anything at them. I'm like, mm -hmm. they throw it back. It's okay. They're soft things, I'm they sure. <laughs> Um, um, actually, I told them just a few minutes ago, I'm like, I'm closing the library and they're still out there. They're like, do we really have to leave? I'm like, never mind. I'm not even going to fight you. I'll just go in the other room. Mm -hmm. So they're one's reading a book and one is trying to figure out the CNC machine. And what is that CNC machine? It's, I'm not familiar with that. I probably, I'm, I'm I know about what does it. it do? It carves wood. It's the carving. Okay, yeah, we have one also, but um, it's been it's been quite a task to figure out how to make it work consistently. We have I, one in our art department that we were a part of trying to help get it up and running. <laughs> it's a, little, a lot of little glitches with them. I have a um, a different first year teacher who is not returning, but he put it all together and set it all up and is kind of teaching this eighth grader how to do it slowly. Um, so cool. We'll see next year how it goes. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I have the 3D printer, a different first year teacher. I, I'm learning to delegate. It's, it's a problem, but you know, you can be the expert on this. I know, I know this much about it and I can start it. And then I, when I get mad at it, somebody else has to come and fix it. Cause I, so too many things for me to know all of it. So I'm trying to, make experts on all of them so I can have someone to go to. That's great. Um, can you tell me or tell us, how do you really go about getting all that support from your administrators and building leaders? Um, well, currently I, I, so my administrator is not tech savvy, um, but he loves the 3D printer. So when he first saw it, he was like, okay, Kelly, explain to me like I'm, like I'm three. I'm like, I can't because I don't understand it well enough to use those words. To, I'm like, I will explain it to you like you're three when I figure out enough how to do it. <laughs> like, I can't use smaller words yet because I don't understand what the big words mean. So, um, but he has been, he, he loves that. So I just keep poking at it. I'm like, you know, he's, and he's like, do we have enough of that, that plasticky stuff that's in the circle that goes through the thing. <laughs> I'm like, I have enough in my budget this year, but mm -hmm. can I have a makerspace budget next year? Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. Okay. I wasn't exactly expecting that, but I don't know how much is in it, but it's more than what I had. So, and I'm like, what about the wood for the CNC machine? Can I, can I, he's like, I'll get you anything you need. I'm like, excellent. So I'm like, what else do I need? I've got a 360 camera that came in yesterday. Mm. So we're playing with that. We're going to make a tour of the school 
using cool. the camera. And I told him, I'm like, I want to figure out like how to put it on a tripod and have a robot do it. So that way I'm not in all the pictures. <laughs> and he just looked at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, oh, we'll figure it out by Christmas. It'll be okay. So That's he right. likes technology projects, our products, but he doesn't, he wants you to figure them out and do them. So he likes the outcomes. Yeah. Like I had to teach him Facebook and it was painful. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now he loves you. And that, I, you know, I think that's something that I've noticed with you, Kelly, that you, um, you've had, he's not your first administrator, but when a new person comes in, it sounds like with the new teachers, with the kids as they're transitioning into your building, and then also with the new administrator, that you're really good at advocating for the library and showing the dynamic nature of what it means to be a school librarian in this in this um, time. So um, you, you mentioned a little bit about the new teachers. My question for you is, <laughs> this is something I have trouble with, how do you like present all that you can do with them and for them without overwhelming them and making them want to run in the other direction? Because <laughs> um, you're so excited and you want to help, but you know, and you want to be welcoming, but also, you know, how do you kind of make sure that you're supporting them just enough. And, and the same, I guess, with the kids. Well, I found out at, before school even starts, I go to the new teacher meeting mm. for the district to talk about our grants for the district. And I found out last week that I was really overwhelming in that meeting last year. So I need to tone it down a little. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that would have been really good feedback like in September. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's more, I try and find out like what they're working on because I have a pretty good grasp of the, t of the curriculum in their subject areas. So I try and just show them, hey, here's some things I can do. Um, I also, for example, we had two new eighth grade social studies teachers this year. So I made sure to bring them down to the library to teach research mm, great. And I need to do my orientation because the ELA teachers already knew what I was doing. So, but the social studies teachers didn't. So they needed to see Destiny and the databases mm -hmm. and go through it with the kids and talk about reliable sources. So that way they knew just a, a little bit of what we do. Um, it sounds like you, you're taking something off of their plate because otherwise they would be mucking about trying to figure it all out. And you're like, hey, that's something I can do for you, which I think is a nice relationship builder. And that's, I mean, I say that all the time. Like our whole job is to try and make teachers lives easier so That's I right. pretty much do whatever you want you yeah know, make your principal look good and make your <laughs> teachers lives easier exactly. and then the kids will be you know they just benefit from it that's good and then I also go through the kids a lot so when the teachers aren't on board I just make sure to teach the kids what I need like oh we have these robots and then they tell the teachers why don't we get to use the robots mm -hmm. well and then they're, then they're like, Kelly, what did you just do? <laughs> Why don't I tell you about this lesson that would work really well in your, in this next unit? Mm -hmm. So, or let's come down. They're, well, they're like, I don't know how to do that. I'm like, well, let's come down and do it together. I don't know. The kids will figure it out. That's right. Um, I have said a number of times to some of our more experienced teachers, we need to let go of some of that control and the kids just know how to do it already or they'll figure it out. That's right. And I think too, it's, you know, important to let them fail a little bit so they know how to handle that <laughs> for future. So even if they don't figure it out right away, that whole idea in the, in the standards about iteration and, you know, a new iteration, another iteration, and how they can build, you know, resiliency from all that too. And cool. definitely helping each other. Mm -hmm. um, because... I might not know, we were doing um, green screen videos and they're like, how do we, I'm like, I don't even know, I'm still videotaping over here. Someone over there has figured it out already. Go ask them, mm -hmm. go find that video. Go. You guys figure it out. And they all did. I never mm -hmm. actually looked at the program. That's and the awesome. teachers were like, how do you do this? I'm like, I don't know, the kids figured it out. Mm -hmm. So, Well, Kelly, believe it or not, it is three o'clock. So uh, thank you so much for sharing your ideas with us, both what you've done and what you're planning on doing and kind of work, talking through like, how do you get the, how do you get to yes? So <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you very much for inviting me. This was a lot of fun. Wonderful. Thank you. See so, you soon. Have a great summer, everyone. Yeah, thank you, you too. Bye. <laughs>
So we have a uh, leading from the library coming up next. So I hope that you will be jumping out of this session and jumping into our next one where we will talk with uh, the co-author of the book that Victoria is holding 